Let's move across the Indian Ocean to the Maldives. This is actually the first story I ever did for National Geographic magazine in 2008. And I met Guy Stevens, he's a manta ray researcher, and he had discovered what he reckoned was the world's biggest manta ray feeding aggregation in the world. And um, the place was called Hani Faru, and he had a major issue. And the issue was the fact that this site was basically about to be developed into a marina. He asked me to be the first person to photograph his manta rays. And, and basically, you know, hopefully we're able to use those images to try to raise awareness about this amazing, amazing location there. We had to travel in the southeast monsoon. You know, this is not the Maldives of your honeymoon. It rains, it's dark, the seas are very rough for us to get out to the study site using local boats. The manta rays, they love it, because what happens, there is upwelling. You know, a lot of nutrients push to the surface and you know, a lot of plankton aggregate, and these manta rays migrate there from all across the Maldives, mainly to feed. Hanifaru Bay is basically this sort of little island on the bottom right, and then you have this sort of weird indentation in the reef. That indentation makes for an incredible plankton trap. And when the tides and the currents are just right, all the plankton gets sucked into this bay and it just gets circulated in this eddy. And it just increases and increases and increases. And this is where the manta rays go. Now when the plankton concentrations are quite patchy and low, the mantas, they're solo artists. They feed by themselves. Now imagine you're a manta ray and the food's quite patchy. There's a patch there, there's a patch there, there's a patch everywhere. Now they can either swim through and feed on the plankton like this, but then they have to go all the way around to come back, and by that time the patch might have moved. So they do somersaults backwards, like a puppy chasing its own tail. They just go around and because, I mean, that is the most effective way for them to feed. As the plankton density increases, they start to feed cooperatively. They create these feeding trains where one lines up head to tail. Now, why do they do that? Well, plankton can't exactly you know, swim away from a manta ray, but they can outmaneuver a ray. So the plankton can actually feel the pressure wave of the manta ray as it swims. And they can leap a few centimeters upwards or downwards. And they can leap over the mouth of the ray and then they tumble down the back. Of course, now all they do is they tumble into the mouth of the next ray <laughs> or the next ray or the next ray. So it's a, you know, a really efficient way to hunt down your food. Plankton increases. The water gets incredibly cloudy and milky. Hundreds of these guys are aggregating now. And they're basically coming together for something that's called mass feeding which is when multiple of these feeding chains kind of almost connect and they create this sort of crazy, in-your-face, mass feeding ballet. Free diving here is quite interesting. You know, you have to be careful not to get hit by these guys. You know, they're completely non-aggressive, but they're big. Three, three and a half meters or four meters of a wingspan, and um, they can knock you out. But most of the time, it's a ballet. You know where they're going to be. They know where you are. And then every year, once in a while, something weird happens. You know, these sort of ballet dancers turn into drunks. Bumper cars at a country fair, it's just things go nuts and they start crashing into each other and something just goes horribly wrong with the choreography and, you know, and that's when you're in trouble because you're sitting underneath them, you're holding your breath and you're going, oh no. And then you have to swim slalom-wise to get through them without them knocking you on the head, which never been hit by a manta ray, which is, you know, knock on, is this real wood? Yeah. <laughs> knock on wood, great. Manta rays, you know, when the plankton's gone, they leave. And there's a few enterprising rays that have figured out that plankton hides on the seabed. So they go down on the bottom, and they scrape their bellies on the seabed, and all the plankton pops up out of the sand and gets vacuumed up into the manta ray's mouth. So, you know, incredible feeding behavior. And this was published, I think, as either 2008 or 2009. And overnight, you know, Hani Faru and his manta rays were kind of teleported into the offices and homes of millions and millions of people. With the article, a lot of grassroots conservation movements on the ground, and you know, a very fortunate change of government, Hani Faro became a marine reserve that same year, and the president himself actually vetoed the development. So today, you know, Hani Faro is still the place in the world for tourists and divers to come to actually observe this fantastic manta ray aggregation. And it's not a marina for super yachts, which is great. Um, in the Maldives, Manta rays are worth way more alive than dead. And I think they bring in millions and millions in tourism revenue every single year. So as far as the conservation of manta rays goes, the Maldives really are the place to beat these days.